Welcome back to another episode of Out of Bounds on the Boomer Bus channel. I'm your host, Terry, and today we're talking about the coronavirus. Coronavirus! Coronavirus! And so, um, obviously, there's a lot going on. We've been in the midst of this thing for almost five months, and it's at a point where it's not slowing down, so it seems like we're going to go into... A situation where six months of the year 2020 has been dedicated to coronavirus, uh, quarantine, lockdown, all that stuff. And it has brought up a lot, much like the Black Lives Matter movement and all that. Um, a lot of people with free times on the hand. It has sh really shown the true colors that along with social media and technology, we've seen the true colors of a lot of people in this country and for those who have traveled around the country, you know, we got some interesting places and interesting people. But with, again, technology, we are starting to see that more and more and more. And so I'm seeing memes going around now, people talking about America and this and that. And we've always heard this stuff about America, but I don't think any I don't think uh, uh, most people in America would even disagree at this point that with everything hidden it has really put us in a interesting light to the rest of the world uh definitely for me as well where we see just the full everything on display it has been a interesting time so there's four areas i want to talk about maybe more if i remember more but there's four areas i want to talk about where i think coronavirus and the big picture really exposed and i don't use that in just a pure negative term but it really showed um people in this country um people outside this country kind of what's going on within our um our society and how a lot of things historically have played into that so number one and i think the most prominent is the it has exposed the miseducation the mistrust and the conspiracies against government and media to that point as well we all know and i'll say this here this is my stance put on your mask we know all the people who refuse to put on the mask and i want so badly to put them down but i'm not going to i'm, a, I'm not going to call them dumb i'm gonna stick with miseducated um or ignorant i mean at the end of the day I just don't believe people are willfully trying to be ridiculous unless, you know, people that are have the mental capacity to understand. I don't think anybody's willfully being ridiculous. I think the people of uh, the vast majority of people that don't get on board with the safety protocols are miseducated. They fundamentally believe something different and it is not true, but they believe it. Um, and then there's a small percentage that just are, you know, they don't have the mental capability. But overall, there's this large group of people that don't want to wear the mask and they don't want a social or physical distance. They don't want to follow the rules and they claim that it's all fake. It's a hoax and it's ridiculous. It's like I've heard the conspiracy theories and that's part of it, too. And that's always going to happen. Like, I enjoy conspiracy theories to a point. Some don't make any sense to me, but I enjoy conspiracy theories. So that's always going to happen. It doesn't matter. It, it could be the Oreos releasing a new flavor and there's a conspiracy of how that happened. So that's always going to be there. But I think with coronavirus in general, that ends up mixing in with a lot of this miseducation where people just don't believe in the government. They don't trust them. And I think that is fair. And that has uh, exposed a sentiment of the people. And we'll get kind of to the other part, but that is one part of it. There's people that just don't trust what's coming out. Now, obviously, you got people, like I said, conspiracy that just like this is a big plot of everything. Then you got people that mistrust certain parts of the government. Then we're talking about political parties. And it's just silly. Like recently, for whatever reason, this has been recent. I've seen a lot of people talking about a Democratic hoax. Like really a Democrat? You really think the Democrats made a hoax? Because there was already 
this, uh, you know, conspiracy about this whole thing being a hoax and people of all around the world who control the world coming together to make this happen. And now we got people that are just like, as people are like, dude, that don't make any sense. Now they're like, well, it's a democratic hoax. So you now you're telling me one political party who is not in office of the president right now somehow constructed the whole entire world to go along with a hoax. Again, I said it from the very beginning. If this was just in the U.S., I would be I myself would be having all type of conspiracy theories. I'd be talking about everything. But when you're talking about this happening around the world, global, then there is no room for these silly ideas. And a lot of times they have no type of evidence behind them. But again, I'm not going to stick on conspiracy, but that does show a lot of mistrust. Like on the surface, um, I think it's pretty solidly um, proven that this is a medical pandemic. This is a virus. This is something that is highly contagious. This is something that certain countries were not prepared for. This is something that our connectedness, as far as our travel, uh, we're the most connected that we've ever been in any time in history. It just sets us up to be vulnerable to this type of thing. And obviously the scientists and um, a lot of people in these areas have been uh, researching and trying to find out as much as they can, but it takes time. It takes time with everything. There's a lot of people that are trying to question the time and it's like, if you look at the history of everything, we didn't have to shut down, but it still took time to find things in the research and all that. And so all that is just to show that people don't trust the government. And I think that's a bigger issue. That's a much bigger issue. And um, it's for good reason. Like I said, I enjoy conspiracy theories. There's some I believe myself. Um, is not inherently negative because the government is in power and a lot of people in power do shady things and some stuff has been revealed, but you better believe for everything that's been revealed, there's 15 things we don't know about. You look at Snowden and anybody else that was a whistleblower and how they are being hunted down by the, you know, country, they can't come back. And so to act like there aren't secrets, um, that that's silly to me. So I agree that people are mistrustful of the government and it's the government's fault. I always go back to a joke that Paul Mooney said, but it, it reckons back to an older time. And I took uh, AP U.S. history in high school and that's not a flex or a brag, but that does remind me of like, why do I like some of these things pop up in my head? I'm like, oh, yeah, I took kind of a rigorous class on U.S. history. But anyway. Paul Mooney always makes a joke like we need to have a revolution like they used to do. Like every, you know, so every so many years we should march down to the uh, White House and start chopping heads off. And basically the army should let us. And and it's a joke in his special, but it rings true. All jokes have part truth in it. And I'm like, I'm not saying that that's exactly what we should do, but that level of accountability was normal back then. Like, yes, because the army obviously wasn't is what it is now, but they were recognized that they're citizens, there's people. And so we're going to let the people hold these people accountable. And they did. They used to pull people out of offices that were doing corrupt things or not helping the people. And they were chopping heads off like and so. Um, you know, that's the same sentiment with all these people about the Second Amendment right. They want guns. They want to march around. They want to show their power, even though you got a gun. So, OK, put the gun down. But anyway, but still, it's the same sentiment. And so I agree to the point that we don't hold uh, officials accountable. Uh, we've been told the electoral system is what we use to hold people accountable. And on smaller levels, it may work, but it doesn't work well on a big federal level. And so people have grown to mistrust the government who regularly abuses their power. So there's that. And then there's miseducation. And that is a huge topic. Again, you go back to the people 
the the virus isn't real. And I hear people. I haven't. I don't know one person that got it. That does. That's a proximity fallacy. That doesn't mean it's not real just because people you know don't have it. Like I know people who have had it. I know people who have it now. Like I know people that uh, contracted it. It. I know people that are sick from it now. I know people that have died from it now. And again, you look at the information given. And a lot of times when you talk to these people, they're pulling all their beliefs from one source, one or two sources that are easily refuted if you just look at the information. But as I said, this has exposed a miseducation in America. Um, one thing that I've always been a proponent, well, not always, but recently been a proponent of, and I'm very much a proponent of now, is the idea that we need to put research studies into our uh, high school curriculum. Students need to graduate high school at least with the ability to look at research and understand what it means because people get so lost in numbers, they get so lost in percentages, they get so lost in headlines, they don't know how to actually read the information and determine for themselves, is this a good study? Is this set up correctly? What do these results actually mean? Like you could I always say you could put 90% of COVID cases come from Texas. And if you like look at the study, they only surveyed 10 people and nine of them were for Texas. Like you got to understand all the nuances of a study, but people don't. And that's a failure on our education system. And people grow up not understanding any of this. They don't have to because I don't work in that field. But then you realize in times like now why you need to know how the government works, why you need to know how studies work, why you need to know where legitimate sources are, because now you relying on information because before you thought you know everything. Now it's something you don't know. Now you're relying on bad sources and you stick to your guns because I know everything and it's not the truth. And so we got a lot of people, again, talking about it's a hoax, it's not real, or we're talking about it's not that bad as they're trying to make it, they're trying to scare us. And it's like, bro, again, fatalities is not the only thing. Just because people don't die from it does not mean there are not other consequences from this. And so, but again, unless it hits personally home, people don't care. I mean, you got the Richard Rose thing, which a lot of people are talking about. I don't talk about that much, but because everybody's like looking for an example to point at. And honestly, I'm like, I already know people like this and I already understood this was going to happen. I don't need this evidence to show you, but there it is. If you want to look at it, you got people that are just like, it's fake, it's fake. I know people not even like, oh, it's fake, but people like, ah, it's not that bad. I'm, I'm not going to catch it. Or if I catch it, I'm going to be fine. And I know people have caught it and uh, really freaking lost their minds and panicked. And then they switched their tune. You got to take it seriously. And it's like, Yes, everybody waits until it actually happens to them. But until then, they're miseducated. And so there's all types of miseducation about how it can't spread, how it can, blah, blah, blah. And you got to give grace to understand that people have to take time to learn. And if you stay up to date with credible sources, you'll stay up to date with what they know. Now, will they contradict themselves? Probably because they learn new information as they go. And it's just like, as soon as somebody says something different, oh, well, you just said this. So obviously you don't know what you're talking about. So, but here's the thing. What's funny to me, if a medical professional or experts or whoever, if you think they don't know what they're talking about, what makes you think you know what you're talking about? You're not trained in any of this. So again, you have people like that. And then again, the mistrust, the education comes in the politics. Uh, the president didn't want to wear his mask. People took that as a political rallying cry. And now it's a fake Democrat thing. Or it, we're at a point where wearing a mask is political and it's absolutely absurd. It's absolutely absurd because there's many countries that have been doing this as a as a casual practice before. If you're sick, 
you wear the mask and then people are like, ah, that's not going to stop me from getting it, bro. Understand what they've said. Read. The mask is not to stop you from getting the virus. The mask is to stop you from spreading the virus. And so the only way you're protected from not getting it is if other people do what you're doing. So I can't pass it to you. You can't pass it to me. That is the thought process of behind the mask of initially. And then people just did not listen and they went their own way with it. And then eventually it becomes political. People are talking about First Amendment rights and their rights. And it's it's absolutely selfish. It's nothing else but selfish. Even to talk about my rights is selfish. Like if somebody is um, somebody I know is hungry and I know they had a bad time and they're asking me if I could spare five dollars for food. It's my right to refuse them. That doesn't mean that it's the right thing to do. People confuse rights with being right. And so it's selfish. Like you, it could be all right, but it's selfish because you're only really hurting other people. If everybody's wearing a mask in a room, but you now you're the only one that, or you're the most likely one to spread a virus. And so you're just being completely selfish. And then you see all these people going crazy around stores and everything. And again, there's people that's not all there, but there's people that can comprehend enough and they're still going crazy talking about it's your right. It's not your right to be served. It's not. You could wear, you could not wear your mask. Don't mean we have to serve you. Not to mention there are federal laws like you don't have the right to kill anybody. It's against the law. So when they make it a law where you live to wear a mask, you have to wear the mask. But again, it becomes this big thing. And again, it, it just exposes how selfish we are. And I'll get to that. Actually, let me go into that. So the second thing I think that um, the virus has really shown is the difficulty in the real price of freedom. We always talk about the land of the free. We talk about America, we talk about a free country. Again, people talk about their rights and we're free and blah, blah, blah. And yes, uh, in a large sense, we are. We do have a lot of freedom. However, while a lot of people, they celebrate that and a lot of people uphold that in our country, we have seen what the cost of that is. Like um, like I said, and, and we know that a lot of countries are having second waves and things are different, but China, for example, and I actually don't know all the information about it's confirmed that it came from them. I, don't, I think that would have been bigger news, so I would have to believe it's not seriously confirmed. But anyway, China, let's just say, for example, because that's where it started, and they got to a point where they curved off or other countries. They got to a point where they curved off and you you had a lot of people that are like, OK, it took them this amount of time to do it. So in this amount of time, America should be fine. However, what you miscalculate is the culture. You miscalculate the culture where these places might not be as free and the culture is to listen to authority. The culture is to be con courteous and considerate of others. Like I said, there's a lot of countries that do the mask thing before there was a pandemic. That's something that they commonly do because they don't want to get people sick. And so looking at that early on, you got I had a lot of people like, OK, well, it should be this long. And I'm like, but we're not those countries like we're not bred to just listen to authority. If anything, we're bred to just not listen to authority. And so what happened? We became the hotbed of the country or of the uh, globe because we have people that not only didn't listen or be considerate, but actively refused to. You got people coughing on people, sneezing, spitting on people. You got people not wearing masks. You got people not wearing shoes. You got people going to parties trying to get Corona, like all types of stuff like and the world is looking at that. And again, it's just, well, 
not even the world, but I think a lot of people that are citizens, it exposes what the cost of freedom is. Because there's, again, a lot of people that say we're free country and we celebrate it. But then they're like, man, I wish we could just make everybody stay at home and observe quarantine. I wish we could just make everybody wear masks and all that. And it's like, well, yeah, because that's a different form of society where we have some type of dictatorship and we are forced to listen to the rules. But that's not what America is. And you don't get to take the good things with it where you could tweet stuff out. You could talk about your boss and you can still get fired. There's still consequences, but you won't go to jail. You won't be killed over it. You won't disappear over it. You can say stuff. You can do stuff. But um, at the same time, you have to take the good with the bad, the crookeds with the straights. And so that means that, yes, since we are free, we're going to have people that are going to refuse some of these guidelines and they're not going to care about other people. And so it again, as I said, is completely selfish. You have the right, but it's selfish. And that exposes the price of freedom. It, and again, I don't think there's any I don't know the word, but there's no one way to run society where you're talking about a, a democracy, a dictatorship, you know, capitalism, oligarchy, like all, all these types of things that I don't think there's any one way that works completely. I think they all have ups and downs and for I mean, we understood the negatives in America, but I think we really are on a heightened display of showing some of the negatives of what it costs to be a quote unquote free country where people are just being absolutely ridiculous about it. Um, and then the third thing, it exposes our capitalism. Um, we know we're a capitalist society. We know we run off business. We run off money. We know uh, cash rules everything around me in America, dollar, dollar bills. Um, so it's just it is something we know, just like our freedom, but it is really on display. There's countless examples. You talk about sports. Sports is not an essential thing. There's people that talk about entertainment, mental health and all that. But still, these people have to take that risk. And I don't care that they're being compensated. And it's not exactly that straight. Like um, the NBA, for those that follow that in the bubble, there's a lot of people that speculate before this even happened. Like, oh, the players have the choice not to go. And it was like, well, what do you think uh, people are going to uh, remember about the ones that chose not to go and you have people uh, that did front office jobs you got former players you got some current players like yes that's absolutely a conversation and so to act like it's just no strings attached you don't have to go is not true there's still coercion and power there where it's like well if I don't go to the bubble and I don't play especially if you're a big name imagine LeBron James Giannis Kawhi saying I'm not going like that would be remembered very harshly. So there's that pressure. And then obviously you do have the financial incentive where you might need money. People do a lot of crazy things for money. And that's it. That's taking advantage of them. If you say, OK, we're not going to pay you if you don't go. But if you go, we'll give you the salary like that's a huge, you know, carry and the same thing with football, like um, and right now they don't have an option. They don't have a you, you you could just not play this year. So and they don't even get me started on college sports where they're not being compensated. But B, they're students. You're talking about putting them in classrooms and residence halls. You're talking about putting them on campus with other students after doing a sport where you're highly likely to get uh, infected. And so. There is no question. Um, education. We got uh, K through 12 schools, uh, districts that are trying to get people back in the building, talking about doing a hybrid. Higher education, 100% business. And there's a lot of talk. That's the area I work in. There's a lot of talk a long time about, yeah, we got to do things to stay operating. But at the same time, it's all about the students. It's all about the experience. No, it's not. For a lot of schools, it's just a business, just a money-making machine. 
Like they never take time to really look at what's effective and what works. They just want to see what attracts people. There's not no efficiency. And so when you had COVID hit, you have a lot of schools that are talking about closing or on the brink of closing or desperate because there's never been any efficiency. It's just been hemorrhaging money that's just, you know, year after year trying to attract more people to get more dollars. There is no reason anybody should go to school. Point blank period. I don't stand zero to 100 on many things. This is one I'm on zero with. You can't really convince me. Um, there's no reason. Like I think education specifically should shut down for the year. And this, this is the time to become efficient. This is the time to have work groups and meetings on Zoom and assess and talk like, how do we get better? You could provide resources. This should be in like an extended summer. You could provide resources, workbooks, uh, discussions, articles, books. You could do all those things for students that want it. People that want community, they we can have a weekly Zoom meeting to discuss the work. People that want to keep their minds active, we can do all that. But this shouldn't count as grades. This shouldn't count towards you know you going to the next level. We shouldn't be trying to push people back on campus. We shouldn't be trying to push K through 12 students in the classroom. We shouldn't ask teachers to be in there and enforce mask on. And we shouldn't ask teachers to change their curriculum. It's a business. It's nothing but a business. Everybody's trying to justify their job and there's no grace. And capitalism, and I get it, I understand, I'm from a business background, I, I support capitalism to a point where the market gets to decide, but if you don't have any morals and ethics in it, capitalism becomes cutthroat. And that's the point where we're at, where it's like, yes, it would be better for the movie theaters, for the movie studios, for... Um, the bars for the education uh, institutions for a lot of people to just take the L that would be the right move take the L bite the bullet as we get this thing under control and then come back and, and in the meantime prepare prepare to be better but no that's not what anyone is going to do they're going to risk athletes lives they're going to risk uh professional staff lives they're going to risk teachers and professors lives they're going to risk whoever lives they have to to get some money and all indications is we're going to have a second wave we're going to have another shutdown and all the people want to do right now is get the money right now while they can get as much money as you can and then we'll shut down oh well then we'll see what happens next and so it's very disheartening but it shows the ugliness of capitalism. Now, there's a lot of people that are like, you know, down with capitalism, kill capitalism and all that. And I haven't heard any good alternatives to it. So like I said, I'm down with capitalism to a point, but you are seeing the negative parts of it. It becomes very inhumane. It becomes very cutthroat. And so we're at a point where we're trying to force things to work. We're, we're, we're desperately trying to force a round shape into a square hole and it is not the best solution it's not the ideal and it doesn't matter because people want to make money and people want to keep their jobs and it's, it's just sad that as a country we cannot take the loss no one will take the loss no one will just say okay we're gonna stop and do the right thing. You got California and Harvard and all these other people where early on they're like, we're going straight online. We're not asking students to come here. That's not right. And people are like, yeah. And then they turn around and say, but we're still charging full price because we, we can't operate without that money. And it's like, bro, and the people that have the most means to take the hit are the last people that will do it. And that's capitalism. And lastly, I, I, I started to say it exposed our human nature, but I don't know if that's true. I think it's not just the human nature because we, we I talk a lot about the uh, first rule of nature or the first law of nature. 
And I, I tell a lot of people, remember the fall, first law of nature. I, I often bring that up and look it up if you don't know what it is. But to me, yes, on some level, I look at that as a human thing. But I stop and remember, like I said, there's countries that have got it together. There's countries that are considerate and wear their masks where we hoard toilet paper to the point families and people can't get toilet paper for weeks because people haven't brought up so much toilet paper. You know, there's countries where people stayed home and didn't try to break free where we got people crowding on the beach partying together. There, there's people in countries where they've completely flattened everything with their cases. And here we are as the hotbed of the world in America. So while I want to say we've all shown our human nature. And like I said, when it seems like things are going bad, people are buying guns because they're ready to fight and protect themselves. People are buying tissue like no one can think about, hey, well, what if this other person can't have tissue? I don't care. I got to worry about me. There's people buying up all the food like people did all these things. People did a lot of things. And I want to say that's human nature. But then I look at other countries. They didn't do that. And that brings up this idea of nature versus nurture. And I've always been a nurture person. I've always been leaning to that. And there's certain things I think that are programmed in our DNA. But with this one, I have to stop and think, is it really in our nature as humans? Like we are animals. Don't get that wrong. We are programmed to do certain things at the end of the day. Like when the chips are really down, we're talking about apocalypse type stuff. But in this quiet situation, I can't say that everybody acted like America did. But I think it exposed how we are in America, uh, whether it's the freedom or the misconceptions. We are very, very selfish. Now, it's not everybody, obviously, but we are very selfish and the world is looking at us. Um, I had a friend the other day telling me about um, somebody that they know in Ireland and they were like posting or they were showing them this post from this other person in Ireland and they were just talking about how pissed they were that they had American tourists there. And it was just like, go back to America. And these are white people. And so it's not like just a race thing. Like it's becoming a global thing. Like people are like, no, we don't want you here, America. And that's how we've always treated other people. Not everybody, but we've treated certain places and countries like that. And that's how people are starting to look at us. Like we don't want you in here walking around, taking pictures, spreading the corona, not wearing the mask, like go back. We did our work as citizens to get our place in order and we don't want you here. And that's a lot of sentiments from different countries that I'm seeing. And I, again, I think we have been exposed on many levels and I think this is the result of it. So that's my thought. So go to the comment section. Let me know what you think about all that. Share it around. Get the conversation started. Thumbs up. Subscribe. And thank you for listening.